vintage perfume is something I'm personally quite interested in. Uh, I think that generally the history of perfumes and who wore them many decades ago is an interesting concept to me. And in this video I'm going to discuss the top five, I suppose, best perfumes or most popular perfumes that old Hollywood movie stars, specifically actresses, used to wear. So, of course there were many old Hollywood actresses, but I'll be focusing on five. So, and the ones that I have come across are actually all perfumes that I quite like. So, the first one is the ever-famous Chanel Number no. 5, which was supposedly a favorite of Marilyn Monroe. She said something along the lines of, well, a, a reporter asked her, I think, uh, Marilyn, what do you wear to bed? And she said, nothing but a, a drop of Chanel Number no. 5, or something like that, a few drops of this legendary perfume. Which is, I don't blame her, this is a, a very luxurious and very enjoyable sort of perfume. It came out in 1921, and it was a, an extremely unique perfume for its time, mainly because it used aldehydes. I explained this more in my full Chanel Number no. 5 video, uh, or review, but in short, uh, aldehydes are usually synthetic ingredients uh, that have to be manufactured in a lab, and they enhance the notes of a perfume, but also give a certain additional tone to a, a perfume, usually a floral or nutty kind of hue. And the thing about Chanel Number no. 5, which was, even though it came out in the 20s, it remained popular in the 50s and just forever, even today, uh, mainly because it just has this delightful kind of warmth from floral notes in the top and then very musky kind of warm and enriching notes in the bottom. Uh, mainly civet in the base notes. The civet can be a bit strong, that's personally a downside for me, although I do overall really enjoy Chanel Number no. 5. And there's of course the Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilette. Both of these are great. I mean, obviously the Eau de Parfum is going to be stronger. You can actually see the golden color of the Eau de Parfum compared to the lighter wheat color of the Eau de Toilette. Anyway, this was a favorite of Marilyn Monroe's, so that's the first one on the list. The next one, which is another one of my favorites, is the equally legendary Shalimar here. Shalimar is also from the 1920s, it came out in 1925, but it just still remained popular. It's still available today. It was a favorite of Rita Hayworth. Rita Hayworth was, has been known for a variety of movies, um, Gilda, Blood and Sand, that sort of thing, uh, da dancing with uh, Fred Astaire. Shalimar is uh, not for everyone because it's extremely smoky. It, even though it, is ha it has some uh, citrus notes that kind of lighten it up in, in the beginning, but from those citrus notes, you really get into this really deep, smoky, incense-y, just really luxurious uh, oriental fragrance. And it's really something you don't see anymore. It's truly straight from the 20s, the Roaring Twenties. And it was a fav favorite of uh, Rita Hayworth's as, as well as many other people, I'm sure. And even its bottle, which you can see here, uh, was renowned for the time. I believe it, it won an award of some kind for its unique kind of uh, design. I believe it was designed after an urn, since it was inspired off of the tragic love story of uh, that's behind the Taj Mahal. And anyway, so Shalimar by Guerlain, uh, certainly a, a favorite for the ages and certainly in Old Hollywood. The next one is not really Old Hollywood, but instead just kind of out there. From 
Jean Pato Joy, which was a favorite of Jackie Kennedy. And this perfume came out in 1930. Let's see here. The thing about Joy is that it's pretty much the perfume that kept the Jean Pato brand alive during the Great Depression. Uh, since people really wanted to buy fine perfumes, even though it was in the middle of the Great Depression. So, perfumes back then were pretty essential and people really liked them, so that's how the Jean Pato brand survived. The thing about Joy is that it it does have some similarities to Chanel No. 5, uh, but I would say Joy has more of a woods woodsiness and a different kind of musk. Chanel No. 5 is more almost pure civet along with some woody notes, but Joy is far less civet and more woodsy in, in general musk. Lots of wood notes actually. It reminds me of just kind of a, a writing desk made of cedar or mahogany or something like that. And Joy also has some floral notes at the top, but those kind of sink pretty quickly into the more woodsy notes at the bottom. And Joy, a, uh, it was once considered the most expensive perfume in the world, so it makes sense that uh, Jackie Kennedy would want to show it off, but, or at least could afford it. But yeah, Joy was back in its day, uh, was pretty much something that only very wealthy people would wear. And so it was looked uh, upon as the high class, almost the unattainable kind of perfume. So certainly, even though not old Hollywood, not, Jackie Kennedy wasn't really in the movie business, uh, it was certainly a very important vintage perfume for its time. So the next one is Fleur de Bulgarie, or Roses of Bulgare, or the Rose of Bulgare, uh, by Creed, which is, unfortunately my sample has a stain, but you can see here the original founder of Creed. Let me see if I can get the sample here, which is quite a large sample. So this is an especially old perfume, older than the others. Uh, by the way, this was a favorite of Ava Gardner, who uh, is one of my favorite actresses. So the thing about this perfume is that I, it was formulated I believe in the mid 1800s, and it was commissioned by Queen Victoria. So it's certainly a very royal type of scent. And uh, it's it uses Bulgarian roses, and that's the first thing that you really detect. Uh, it's very rosy, unsurprisingly. Uh, but besides that, it also has some uh, woodsy notes that kind of balance out all that rose. And it's a very refreshing, almost grassy kind of fragrance. Uh, very clean. Some people compare it to rose scented soap. I don't necessarily find it soapy as I do just generally uh, clean and refreshing. Um, it's not... It doesn't sting your nose as some clean fresh fragrances do today. It's more of just a very natural, light kind of fragrance. So I can, I can see why Ava Gardner definitely liked this perfume in particular. And uh, the main downside is that it's super expensive. I think anything from Creed is bound to be uh, outrageously expensive. But that's that. And let's see, the fifth one, the final one that I have on my list is actually uh, perhaps my favorite perfume, personally, is uh, called L'Air du Temps, which is this very small sample with doves on the top, um, by Nina Ricci, and it came out in 1948. It was a favorite of Ingrid Bergman. Ingrid Bergman is also one of my favorite actresses. And the thing about this perfume is that it has um, it was very prominent after World War II because it was kind of this heralding of the return of uh, 
femininity, women could stop working in the factories with their terrible conditions and kind of get back, get back the luxuries that they were not able to get during the war. And this is one of my favorite fragrances because it has an unusual warmth to it. Um, in contrast to Joy, which also has a, and Chanel number no. 5, which both have a certain floral warmth, I would say L'Air du Temps has more of an even intense warmth. In my review of it, my full review uh, video, I mentioned that it kind of reminds me of some sort of bath oil or, you know, just a warm bath in general. It has that really comforting, intense warmth that uh, I personally don't find in a lot of other perfumes. You can see it has kind of a light wheat color um, in comparison to a deep golden color, but and I have the Eau du Parfum, which I think does a good job of lasting for quite a long time. And I, I mean, no wonder why Ingrid Bergman must have liked this perfume so much, or, or I believe she chose it as her signature scent, so it was the main thing that she wore. And I mean, it's, it's a luxurious fragrance, but it doesn't jump out at you. So it's more of a subtle, like, almost not a secret that you're wearing it, because it does kind of go out into your aura, but it's it's more just kind of subtle, which I, I enjoy. Um, at the same time, it doesn't fade too quickly, so that's an extra bonus. But other than that, those are the five perfumes from uh, straight from old Hollywood that those actresses used to wear. So. Shalimar from Guerlain for Rita Hayworth, Chanel No. 5 for Marilyn Monroe, Joy by Jean Pateau for Jackie Kennedy, uh, Fleur de Bulgarie for The Rose of Bulgare, by Creed for Eva Gardner, and Le du Temps by Nina Ricci for Ingrid Bergman. So, I personally like all of those perfumes, so it was just kind of fun to go over them. So. If you have any comments about these vintage perfumes or any other vintage perfumes that I left out of this list, uh, you can leave a comment below. If you like this video, leave a like, maybe subscribe, and I make videos throughout the week, so stick around for those.